Hey y'all, what's going on? And welcome to Wild Blue. So what if I told you that there are already aliens living among us? I'd probably sound pretty crazy, right? Assuming you're not already into this kind of stuff. There are rumors that two tribes of alien descendants are living in the mountains of China. So we're gonna look into this and see what there is to this story. Welcome to Wild Blue. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Dropas. Yep, little aliens from the planet wherever that have made their home in the mountains of China. The story goes that these aliens crash landed on Earth here about 12,000 years ago in the Bayan Kara Ula, also known as the Bayan Kara Shan or Bayan Harshan region. This is around 97 degrees east, 34 degrees north if you're looking at your GPS coordinates which is a series of mountains that run between China and Tibet. Apparently the survivors of this crash lived out their days on Earth. Excluded from the rest of the Earthlings here, but occasionally running into and intermingling with the, the locals of the area there in Tibet. And one of the most peculiar finds from this whole ordeal, aside from possible alien human hybrid creatures, is what is known as the Dropa Stones. 716 circular discs with these itty bitty hieroglyphics etched onto them. They were found in 1938 by a Chinese archaeologist by the name of Chi Pu Te. Who he is, I have no idea. But apparently he found these stones and he made a name for himself from it. So he finds these stones, tons of them in a cave there, and on the walls there's these other hieroglyphics showing spacemen and space bodies, celestial looking objects like the sun and the moon and the stars and all that. Just your normal stuff as far as alien hieroglyphics goes about what you'd expect. He also found some graves containing the bones of some little people with these big old skulls. Also something you might associate with your traditional depiction of your aliens, particularly your alien greys. But back to the discs. So each disc was about one foot in diameter, spiral lines on them containing these hieroglyphics, symbols unlike anything we've ever seen before. They were also written in like a negative font size because you need a magnifying glass just to be able to see them. The discs were determined to be made up primarily of cobalt and nickel. These aren't uh, elements you wouldn't find here on earth, but uh, it's just uh, what they're made of. They're also elements found out there in the universe as well. So upon finding these discs, the Chinese Academy of Sciences decided they didn't want anyone else coming here and looking and finding what had been discovered. So they sealed off the area so no foreigners or outsiders could get to it. They said this stuff is too cool for the world to see so we're gonna keep it for ourselves. So they packed it away and for 30 years these discs sat in a warehouse somewhere in China gathering dust until someone else would come upon him. And that person was this other professor named Sum Um Ni. He and his team of other scientists found these discs and apparently somehow deciphered the meaning of these hieroglyphics. How they deciphered it I don't really understand. There's still no idea where this language came from, but one of the inscriptions apparently reads as follows. The Dropa came out of the clouds in their aeroplanes. Before sunrise, our men, women, and children hid in the caves ten times. When they finally understood the sign language of the Dropa, they realized the newcomers had peaceful intentions. Well, there you have it. That's their story. The problem is, well, no one really knows where these stones are today. Maybe it's the Chinese government's covering it up. Or maybe it's all made up. I'd like to think it wasn't a hoax, but it, it kind of looks like it could be that way. 
as unfortunate as it is. As far as us concerned here in the West, this story didn't show up until about 1978 in a book known as Sun Gods in Exile. This book talks about the Dropa and their story. Probably an interesting book, but I haven't read it because it's all fake. And I don't have time to read fake stuff when I'm looking for real stuff. It's science fiction. The guy who created it wrote his own story based it on Russian and French sci-fi books. But he didn't make the Dropa up, at least not completely, just some of the, the details he expounded upon and embellished within his story. The first actual writing that mentions these guys comes from 1962 in a German vegetarian magazine called The Vegetarian Universe. And I have absolutely no idea what a magazine for herbivores has to do with aliens and UFOs. But that's where it was found, this writing. There was an article in this particular issue of the, the magazine called UFOs and Prehistory. Apparently this article had some details regarding the Dropa, and I've been looking for it, but I haven't been able to find the particular issue or article that contained this story. So if anyone out there listening or watching this video has access to this article, please share it with Wild Blue and we'll share it with the rest of this here community. And there's a guy who, I guess, dug up this article. His name was Dr. Jorg Dindel, and he was from Berlin. He also found another story from 1933 about some sort of altercation with some normal Chinese people and then some sort of dwarf-like beings. Now, this magazine article still seems pretty dubious to me, and I still have my doubts about it, but there it is. So we don't have any stones, these dropa stones, but we do have a few pictures. The pictures seem to resemble these Chinese bee discs. And these are ceremonial devices traditionally used in funerals. And thousands have been found throughout China, so they're not particularly rare. But there are apparently several groups of people out here that could possibly be descendants of the dropas. When those caves that I mentioned earlier were discovered, there were said to have been these three foot tall people not resembling any other known peoples in the area with these big heads and yellowish skin. Didn't look like your normal Chinese or possibly Mongolian or Tibetan person. They were something else. But there were two of these tribes, the Hams and the Dropas. And there was fighting between them. Probably a regular old family feud of some sort extended down through generations that maybe in the past these tribes broke off and then found themselves warring with each other as time went on, unable to settle their grievances from past generations. So here's a photo of the two rulers of the Dropas. The Dropas ruling couple, Huipala and Vizla, one four foot tall and one three foot four inches tall, are shown here in this photograph from 1947. And there's also the story of this Chinese village of dwarves in the remote village of Yangtze, about 100 miles from the caves where the stones were supposedly found. 40% of the people living there are dwarves, ranging in size from two feet one inches tall to three foot 10 inches tall. So these guys may be more than just some kind of statistical anomaly. And there really isn't a good scientific explanation for why they're like the way they are. Some scientists have thought maybe high levels of mercury in the soil could have caused this epidemic. But the thing is, mercury will make you dead. It ain't gonna make you short, at least not generationally. So I have to do another video on these people because it really is quite peculiar. Unfortunately, foreigners aren't allowed in the area, so, so if I've got any viewers out there living in China, and y'all can head to this area, try and make a trip out there and see if you can verify any of the details of this story, at least come across this village of these dwarf people. And the final group of people I'm gonna talk about is a Tibetan tribe known as a Dropka. Nothing too abnormal about these guys other than the fact that their name is somewhat similar to Dropa. Ah, uh, they heard something or another. I don't know if it's goats or sheep or their alien counterparts, but Anyway, these semi-nomadic tribesmen just live out there in the middle of nowhere. Not much else to it. Bayangkara Ula remains a largely unexplored wilderness with mountains and plateaus that'll make you lose your breath. Not just because they're beautiful, but because the altitude there is so dang high. 
So if we have any brave expeditionaries out there, go make a name for yourself investigating these guys. So anyway, I'd like to close with this. If y'all have any stories involving aliens, UFOs, ghosts, Bigfoot, any sort of paranormal or strange prophetic dreams, anything of the like, send them to wildbluetvstories at gmail.com. And if you have any videos, audio, photos, drawings, anything you want to share that explains your stories or is something strange that you captured, please send them my way as well. So that about wraps it up for this video. If y'all liked it, like and subscribe. If y'all didn't like it, well that's okay too, I understand. Check out my Facebook page and check out our website. And with that said, Wild Blue out.